I'm going to make it. Not because of Gary. I'm a failure. But I got the blood of Jesus on my life. See? When God, the holy God, looks down, He sees the righteousness of His Son upon my life. Amen. Now I'm going to make it because of what Jesus did. Not because of what I'm doing. I believed upon Him. Received that gift of God, eternal life. And I'm going to make it, no matter what happens. Praise the Lord for that. Brother Wayne stepped up and said, and I share with you, if you write a check this morning, you want that, you can write that check to Olive Branch Baptist Church. It will be counted with your contributions to the church, okay? Church puts that together, then writes a check to the kids. I did not know about that, and I say, uh, I say thank you. Thank you. Matthew chapter 6 in your Bibles, if you will. Matthew chapter 6 in your Bibles, looking at two verses of Scripture this morning, 9 and 10. 9 and 10. There's a lot of uh, names of God. There's a lot of names of God in the Bible. I ask you to be thinking about this, and I ask you to be thinking about when you think of God, what do you think of? Now, I have to admit that at different stages of my life, I think of God in different ways. I really do. I think of God in different ways, okay? Uh, not, all the, not all the time do I think of God in the same way. There's times I think of Him in, in different ways in my life. The things that I'm walking through, the struggles that I'm going through, things that I'm, I'm dealing with in my personal life, and I think of God. You know, right now I'm thinking of God as the healer. Not really for my personal life, but for my son-in-law's life. And so I'm thinking of God as the healer. I'll be honest with you, I think God as my shepherd probably the most. Because I could not make it without God as my shepherd. I really couldn't. He is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. I mean, He takes me by the waters. I'm not smart enough to go to the pasture by myself. You know? That one, I think one of the things we probably ought to do away with in American life is buffets. We just don't know how to do it right. Amen? You pay $10.99, and what do you think when you go to that buffet? I got to do what? Get my money's worth. You know, I see some of these people and they go, Oh no, buffet closed. You go home. You ate too much. <laughs> some of them can see my family coming. I remember us eating at a lobster place down in, in, in Kissimmee. And we ate at a lobster place in Kissimmee. And those two people walked up to our table and they folded their hands and they stood on each side of our table. And I looked at Chris and I said, I think they're trying to tell us something, son. We done been back like five times with lobsters. We were laying them out, buddy. We were asking when the fresh ones were coming out. Now, this is not in the last couple of years. It's been a while. But, you know, I give that illustration because he is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me into those green pastures. He takes me to the still waters. You know, he's my, my comfort when I need comfort. What is God to you? Even right now in your life. And I hope that you can be thinking about that. What is God right now in your life? Now, I want to go somewhere just for a moment because there's a problem. There's a problem with reference, okay? There's a problem with reference in, in relation to God, in respect to God. We've even gotten a way to respect for God. I mean, there's new terms like the big man upstairs. Now, I want to share with you today that I know what reference people are making, but I don't believe it's reverent to call God the big man upstairs. I don't believe it's proper to say Jesus is my homeboy. Now that's, that's a very much a reference today with people. Jesus is my homeboy. You know, well he's not my homeboy. What is Jesus? He's my Savior and my Lord. The big guy, big daddy, big daddy. He's not. He's God. And there ought to be some things we think about in that reference to God. Not just the big man upstairs, not big daddy, not Jesus is my homeboy, not the big guy. Though God is approachable and God is personal. And really in some things, that's what people are trying to get to. That God is approachable. Yes, God is approachable and God is personal. But all you got to do is say, our Father... Heavenly Father, I don't know about you, but when one of my 
kids turns to me and says, Dad, Dad, and I hear their voice that they want to say something to me, I fix my attention on them. And see, we have that with, with the Lord, a relationship. He's approachable. He's personal as our Father. He's still God. And we should recognize that He is a holy God. And we call on Him. Reverent and in respect. It's so important we do that. I mean, all i got to do is call out, Lord, Lord. And He hears me. And that Lord that I'm calling out in is in reverence. He knows my heart. He knows my mind. As we study this sample prayer, this model prayer, there's a, it's a great introduction of, of how prayer should be lined out and how we need to be ushered into the presence of an almighty God. How do you talk to your boss when you want to tell your boss something really important and you want your boss to hear you and you want your boss to do what you've got to ask? You go in with a little respect. You might set an appointment or may I speak with you. Am I right or wrong? Well, listen, homeboy, I want to tell you I want to raise. Is that how you do it? No. You the big dog. You can do it. I want to raise. No. If I like speak with you. Maybe you got a problem. There's a level of respect. There's a level of authority when you do those things. And, and so understand when we want to be ushered into the presence of God, what do we want? We want God to hear us. I mean, I'm in the Psalms and David is praying in these first five or six Psalms. And he says in that five, hear me, oh God. I know I've been a murderer and I know I've been an adulterer. I committed adultery Bathsheba. I killed her husband. I've done wrong, but hear me, oh God, listen to me. I'm crying out, I'm your child. And I don't know about you, but when I pray, I, I want God to hear me. And so when he speaks this in these verses right here in, in, in chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, or excuse me, 9 and 10, he said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father. Our Father. Do you know how important that is? Now see, Satan's been at work for generations because there's a bunch here that you don't have respect for your earthly father. And I'm not into theology and I'm not into talking about that, but my point is Satan has broke down the home. And there's been a lot of fathers that don't deserve respect. So understand you get that context right. Do you understand? There's a lot of dads that's done a lot of bad stuff to their kids, to mamas, uh, all down the line. And they don't deserve respect. But that's how Satan has broke it down, see? He's broke, he's broke it down after the fact that we don't even recognize there's a level of respect to the Heavenly Father. And he's done it in the family here. We ought to recognize our Father. You're in heaven. Recognize who God is. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is thy name. Reverent is thy name. Hallowed. It's very important that we recognize that God is a holy God. God can only look at Gary Taylor because of the blood of Jesus on my life. He can't look at sin. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? What did the Bible say? If you understand, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For the first time, God turned his back on his son. Because God can't look at sin. And Jesus took the sin of the world upon him at that moment on the cross. And God had to turn his back on his son because he couldn't look at the sin that he took. And then the blood was shed on Calvary's cross. And by the way, I don't like the word spilled. Some of your Bibles has spilled. I'd mark through it and put shed. It was not an accident. And when I see spilled, I think of accident. And Jesus didn't accidentally die on the cross. It was a planned event that He gave Himself freely on Calvary's cross. He shed His blood on Calvary's cross. He gave His life. And when He gave His life and He shed His blood... 
God could turn back around and look upon His Son because He became the Lamb slain for the sins of the world. And all you got to do is believe on Him and you get some of that blood. <laughs> Woo! You get a little bit of that blood. And that blood makes you white as snow. And then you can get through it. You know what Kelly's saying about? You can get through it because of the blood of Jesus upon your life. May, may I say to you today, you cannot get through it with your own power. You cannot get through it with your own works and how you live your life. You can only get through it by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That's it. It's Jesus. It's not us. Oh, when we see these verses and they pop out, he says, uh, goes on, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So this morning, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As you look at this, I want you to understand. We're talking about a holy God. We're talking about God that's on the throne. And, and He's our Father. And He's in heaven. Oh, the cry of a needy child to an able and loving Heavenly Father. And it's going to gain His attention when you cry out to the Father. Here we come to notice the petitions. I mean, it's one thing. I don't know about you, but sometimes we don't answer our kids like we ought to. Now, maybe that's because they call you all the time. I'm not sure. Us grandparents listen a little bit more than parents do. I ain't figured that out yet. But anyway, it, it's true. I can get... We do Marco Polo. Anybody know what Marco Polo is? That, that's kind of a cool little device on the phone. It's video chat. Instead of just sending a text message, you video chat and you send it to them. They get it. They send it back. It's quick, too. It really works well. Well, Madison can use it, and I think Caden can, too. It, they, they just love them phones. But, man, I just love to get a video chat, and it'd be one of the kids, you know. And they're talking to me, but I'm getting the ceiling, you know. I'm getting the ceiling, but they're talking to me. But it's just the coolest thing in the world. And, and when they ask for something, bam, I respond. So that's what grandparents do. I know your parents don't like that very well, but anyway, you'll have your day, and then you'll understand all this doctrine I've been teaching, how real it is, okay, when you get there one day. But can you imagine the Heavenly Father when you say and call on Him as Father, and you're His child, and He automatically knows your heart and the pain in your heart? And the Father hears you. I'm listening. Go ahead. I know your heart's broken right now. I heard it when you said our Father. I heard it when you said God. Not Big Daddy. Not Homeboy. But my Heavenly Father. God on the throne of the universe that created all things. Hallowed be thy name. I reverence you. Do you know why it's important to even bow when we pray? Submission. What's that? Submission. Submission. Submitting, reverence, dropping the head. Now, do I pray driving? If you know me, you know I do. I pray driving down the road while I'm traveling. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pray. Now, do I drop my head when I'm going down the road? Well, I better not. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. You know, like everybody else at the traffic light. They got the screen right there in front of them. <laughs> Here they go. They're just doing it. I love it. Oh! I just blow the horn, you know. It's, they call it road rage. I just call it helping everybody out just a little bit. Amen. Go on. And everybody's talking. You know, but there comes a time, and this is important, there's always a time that you and I should be a little more reverent. And that's why the quiet time is so important in the morning. That I, 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 I have that time with God that I can really do what? Bow my head. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There's something to me, and I know those in the back can't see everything, that, but there's something about doing this. Because it's, it's a reverence and, and it's a submission. 
to call on God. Now, does God hear me when I'm walking down the street and I just received a burden and my heart's broken and, I, and I'm talking to God? Does God? Yeah, He hears me. Yes, He does. But there is that time that we need to recognize Him in our life, call on Him, a holy God, our Father, and bow that head in submission to Him. And in reverence to who He is. Why? Hallowed be Thy name. I want to reverence You because You're a holy God. To sanctify, to revere, to regard. Holy, keep it holy. Sacred. There's, there's, a, there's a sacredness to praying. I'm, I'm afraid sometimes we've turned it a little loose. I'm afraid sometimes we've done salvation the same way. Listen, folks, this, this thing is real. When I call upon a holy God, I want to reverence Him. And, and, I, and I, want, I don't want to give myself, submit myself to Him. Prayer should teach us, no matter what the circumstances are in life, the conditions surrounding us, maybe what's going on at work or what your desires are, what's going on at home, but we must never start our prayers with ourselves. Never start our prayers with petitions concerning our own personal well-being. When we come into God, presence, we are coming in unselfish calling on a holy God to hear us. We need to think about that. Now, hallowed be thy name. Let's talk about the name. The name stands for himself. All that he is in his entire building. God. Now, you just hear God, maybe it all don't fall into place. Amen? God. When you think of God, what do you think about? Well, somebody up in, up in the air, right? I'm not trying to be little. I'm just trying to get us to think God, God's in heaven. Amen? He is. Where else is God? He's here in our midst. He's omnipresent. He, he, he's here. Why, how is He here? Well, He's inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, that's the same word, okay? Just help you out there just a little bit. And Baptists have it just like Pentecostals have it. Ah, Y'all got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. You do. It's in there. He lives inside of me. He gave me the Holy Spirit as a comforter. I, he, 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 and, and that Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, takes over for me so many times it's unbelievable. When, when that doctor, when my son-in-law looked at that doctor and said, am I going to die? I just walked three steps forward, put my arm around him, put it on his shoulder, just kind of leaned into him, and the doctor didn't, she actually didn't give an answer there. She said, that's why we're leaving here. Because you can't stay here doing what you're doing. God gave me something, I whispered it in his ear. And I just kind of backed up, and I was like, man, where did that come from? I'll tell you where it come from. It's called the Holy Ghost of God. It lives inside of me. But I was able to speak a word. And that word can be comfort. See, that's what happens when you've got the Lord. That, that's what happens uh, when, when He lives with inside of you. What, what is God? When you say, our Father, what does it really mean to you? He, he's not the God that sits on the throne that if you, if you say a dirty word, He's going to slap you across the face with a cat of nine tails. No, that's not the kind of God we serve. We serve a God of love. He's a God of judgment, a God of chastisement too, but it's not like this. But it's in reverence. What, what does God mean to you? The name God. Now, now, everybody's got a name. So, if Gary Taylor is mentioned in public, what if you all went to work tomorrow and mentioned the word Gary Taylor? You just said Gary Taylor. A lot of people go, who's that? You may say, my pastor. Other people say, oh, oh, is that the pastor of Olive Branch? And some people say, dude, you, that's your pastor? <laughs> I heard so-and-so. <laughs> now, see, that's what would happen. What, what would happen if we said Jonathan Watkins? What, what would we say? If your name is called, what do people think of? See, it's that's something to think about in, in our lives because when we speak the name of God, see, your name stands for yourself, your complete personality. 
when your name is called. Those who know you think of all that is about you. Or at least what they prominently know about you. And is that not right? They think about things that are prominently known about you? You can come in my office and sit down in my office and I can ask you, what do you see in my office? And I do that occasionally with folks. What do you see in my office? They'll look around for a minute and they'll say, uh, ducks everywhere. And there are. There's ducks everywhere. There's real ducks. There's, there's ducks I collect. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere in my office. So what does that say? I like ducks. You know, I like dead ducks. But anyway, excuse me, harvested ducks. Harvested. Did I get that right term in there? I got that right term in there. Harvested. Look around. What else do you see? Pictures. What kind of pictures? Of everybody in my family. My wife. You turn around and see my computer screen. There's five pictures of my wife. Five. Next to my computer screen. They're there on purpose. You go to the counseling table, there's a picture of my wife on the counseling table. Eight by ten, just sitting on the counseling table. When you sit at my desk and face the other direction towards the door, there's two pictures of my wife sitting right on my desk, facing out. You look all around, my children, my grandchildren, my mom, my dad. My mom and dad now have been dead for, my dad's been dead several years. There's pictures of my mom and daddy when I turn around right at my computer screen on the back wall. My mom and dad. Every once in a while, I'll take them down, look at them and talk to them. Put them back. Go about my business. My mamma is right there. I'm kneeling beside her chair and, and, and when she was there and I kneel and I get Mamaw's picture down and I'll talk to her sometimes and we'll talk about Jesus together and I'll stick her right back up there. You know why? Those are predominantly who I am. My family and hunting. That's, that's who I am. You can call my name out. People will talk about that. Well, you know, that's that preacher likes to hunt. You know, or, or he loves his family. And, 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 and what does people say when they call your name out? Or when somebody speaks your name, what is it that people say about you? Um, I can't stand that person. They go to your church. Huh. Let me tell you some stories about them. I mean, think about it. When, when your name is called, when, when, do they say you're a wonderful person? What do they say? See, the idea is our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God needs to be known and well known and favorably known. And that comes from you and I. We need to reverence God and respect God and adore God. And, and that's something we don't need to be taking God's name in vain. You don't need to be saying God blank. And you don't need to be saying Jesus Christ unless you're calling on the Lord in prayer. Because if you're doing it in any other way, you're taking the name in vain. What is His name? We might mention some more of the prominent names of God. How they reveal the nature of His being. Let, let's watch this video that I've prepared and got. And I want you to see this video about the names of God. So listen to the song and watch the names of God. God. Did one of those names just kind of speak to you where you're at right now and in, in your journey and in your life? When you think of that Elohim, the strong one, the almighty, that Elohim, it's a uniplural noun showing that there, there's more than one, which is the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, but yet the Trinity of the Son and the Spirit. Jehovah, Lord, the self-existent one. The I am, I am from Exodus chapter 3. When we see the I am, before Abraham was, there was the I am. And then Jesus became the what? I am. What was he? I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. Jehovah, the Lord. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The providing one. You've allowed today... 
just in what you're doing in just a moment to provide for someone else like you have been doing through the decades. You're allowing that Jehovah Jireh, the, the God of providing to use you to help others. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. I'm calling on the J Jehovah Rapha to touch those that are sick. Miss Cindy's going into surgery this week and having back surgery. And we're praying that Rapha, the Jehovah Rapha will do what? Touch her back and heal her back even through surgery as she does that. God help us that Jehovah Nisa, the Lord our banner. And that's not talking about a banner that flies through the air. But you remember when the children of Israel were wandering and they had a cloud to follow and they had a pillar of fire to follow and wherever that was at, that's where God was at and that's the banner. That's the banner that it's talking about. Uh, Shalom. When we go into the, uh, Bethlehem there at the return to Bethlehem at Christmas you'll run into the rabbi and the rabbi will look at you and go Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace be with you. The God of peace. Raha. The Lord our shepherd. Uh, Sidkenu. The Lord our righteousness. Shama. The Lord is present. Oh friends today God's name means something. What does it mean to you today? You may honestly say it really doesn't mean anything. Now listen to me. And if you said that, that's okay. That just means you're not in the place that you ought to be today. That's it. You might be sitting under the sound of my voice and say, the name of God really doesn't mean anything to me, Brother Gary. Then there's one or two things that's wrong. You're cold and so far away from the Lord, you can't hear the Holy Spirit speak to you. Or you're lost and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because you could sit here today and say, Pastor Gary, I, I don't get anything out of just God's name. I don't understand reverence. It may be because of where you're at. When you think about that, the New Testament name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Did you see Emmanuel up there? God is with us. God is here through the power of the Holy Spirit. That Spirit, that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And He's here with us, inside of us. There's the Father. Uh, we're, we're God's, there's God in heaven. And I'm a child. And I'm crying out to my Father in heaven like I explained. And He's listening and He sends the Holy Ghost and draws us to Christ, convicts us when we do wrong, speaks into us, woo, and seals us into the grace of God for eternity. I'm sealed even by the Holy Spirit. Wow. What is His name? Matthew 1, 20, 1 says, Call His name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. In John 17, 25, Jesus laments that the world hath not known the Father. He implies that if they had only known him as he knew him, the whole world would love him too. Jesus says, love me. If you know me, you know the Father. Oh, Christian people, it's our business as witnesses of Jesus Christ to make God known to others, to share the truth of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, with others. As Jesus has manifested His name and declared it, that men would come to bow before Him, that they would hallow Him, that they would reverence Him, that they would worship Him, the true and the living God. This morning, what do you think of God? The name. The name. There's something about the name. There is. The name of Jesus. How does that affect you? Your Savior. Because there is something about that. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, 
Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. As I walked out of <laughs> a room this week with somebody, I turned around and they looked at me and they said, Jesus, Jesus, preacher, there's something about that name. And I said, yes, there is. Do you know him today? As Jonathan comes with the musicians and we pick out an invitational hymn. Maybe today is the day that you know where you're sitting, that if you was to die, you'd go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. Jesus gave His life for you, that you could put your faith in Him, believe on Him today, and have the gift of God eternal life. Would you come to Him today? Maybe you've been cold and indifferent. Maybe you've just not been as reverent to God. You've been mad at God. Now, I speak about that a lot. I said that in my message last Sunday online. And I got off, told Lori, well, I repeated myself again. Just kills me sometimes when I do that. Well, guess what happened? My phone rang that afternoon about three hours later. A friend that lives five counties away said, I just wanted to thank you for something you said in your message today. You said you got, got mad at God when your daddy came down with pancreatic cancer and it took you a little bit to get over it. I said, I just wanted to tell you thank you for that because I've been mad for 12 years. And today I heard what you said. And I've said, God, forgive me today. I went, wow. Wow. See, I don't know what you're dealing with in your heart and in your life, but God does. But I want you to know one thing. He loves you. You may feel alone. And you may like to sit in a dark room and just look at the wall. Sometimes I do. But I want you to know God loves you. Sometimes I got to go to the woods. I'll be sitting by the tree and watch a squirrel run across the limb. Then I just start laughing. As God speaks to me. The squirrel come down and... I've had things like squirrel come down a tree and I'm sitting next to the tree and the squirrel just go. <laughs> and I've gone. Boo. And the squirrel's like. <laughs> and then the squirrel runs off. And I go, God, you've got a sense of humor. That must have been you. That must have been you. I don't know what you're dealing with today, but I can tell you one thing. To fill your emptiness, to fill your void, to comfort your heart, most of all, to give you a peace that passeth all understanding, and to give you the gift of God, eternal life, you've got to put your faith and trust in Jesus. And not this world, not the doctors of this world, not anybody in this world, but you've got to put your faith in Jesus. That's how you make it. As Kelly sang about, we're going to make it through. Today, what do you need to bring to the altar of God? Maybe your relationship's cold. It's okay if your relationship's cold. Mine's been cold. But if you know it's cold, you need to come and talk to God. And there's something about getting on your knees before a holy God and talking to Him. It makes difference. Let Him hear you. Call on our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed reverence be to you today. You are a holy God. What do you need to bring to the throne? You need to come and be saved today? You need to come and join our church by letter, by baptism? What do you need to do today? Whatever it is, would you do it as God has spoke to your heart? Jonathan, as we sing what number? Number 320. 320 as we stand and sing. You come right now as we sing.